Hi, I'm Cash with Cashed Out Cars, and in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to replace a cam follower in a Mark V Volkswagen. So these cam followers are a common maintenance item that if you have a modified car is recommended to be replaced around every five to 10,000 miles. And if you have a stock car, it's good to check it at least every 20,000 miles. So this is gonna be the complete guide on how to do it. It's a pretty quick job once you know what you're doing. So let's jump right into it. The first thing that you have to do to change your cam follower is to remove this high pressure fuel pump, which is what the cam follower pulses. And to get to that, you have to take your engine cover off. And if you don't know how to do that, I have a video that covers how to remove your engine cover on my channel. Then you'll have to remove this electrical connector from your fuel pump. And to do that without a special tool, you want to take a screwdriver and stick it down and flex this lever just a little bit here. You'll hear it pop just a little bit when it releases, and then you'll be able to slide it straight off. Now you'll want to start up your car and let it run for about 10 to 15 seconds to bleed off some of that high pressure fuel so it doesn't spray everywhere when you remove the pump. Next you'll have to remove this electrical connection and depending on the orientation of it, it might be a little bit trickier to remove than that one up top. So I'm going to try to use this little hook tool here to pull that tab forward. Next you'll have to remove this valve to one bleed off some high pressure fuel and two to gain access to one of these bolts that holds the fuel pump on. And on mine, there's this little plastic cover that you have to unscrew to gain access to the valve itself. So take that off and then you'll be able to get a wrench on there and loosen it up. But before you do that, you want to get a rag under there just in case some high pressure fuel comes out. So with your rag in place, slide the wrench on there and safety glasses and gloves are a good idea here. I actually just recorded this and the camera stopped recording. So a little bit of fuel already came out. But you'll want to gently tap it and loosen up that valve and then a little bit of fuel will come out. And then you'll be able to back that out and take that all the way out to gain access to the next bolt. The next thing to do is to remove this fuel fitting right there. Once again, you'll want to get a rag under that. And you do want to be careful of all these other lines running around here. So keep that in mind while you're doing this. And at this stage, you could just very carefully pull that fuel line down and out there. And I actually did a pretty good job bleeding off the fuel when I started the car, so not a lot came out there, which is good. Next, and this is probably the trickiest part on the early Mark Vs, there's a banjo bolt right here, right next to that fitting that you disconnected. And that has a triple square bit that you need to use. The positioning of this triple square is the hardest part about this whole uh, replacement here. And you have to slip it down below where the actual fastener is and be careful not to mess up any of your lines. And then you'll want to get that in place there on the banjo bolt. And then you'll want to take a wrench and put that down below and you should be able to turn it out. And just to go over this again, that's the banjo bolt right there with the triple square in it. And then down at the bottom, I have that half inch wrench that drives the triple square and that's how I'm able to get this thing out. I will say that having the wrench down here works great for loosening it, but for cracking it, you'll wanna to try to get the wrench up top there so there's a shorter distance between the wrench and the actual fastener that you're trying to remove, and that'll make it easier so you don't strip it out. So right now I've got a rag below the gear wrench and the uh, M8 tool that I'm using because this thing definitely drips some serious gas when you're doing this. Uh, right now you could see me pulling out the banjo bolt here and I'm going to try to not drop it but we'll see how that goes. So now that we've got that banjo bolt off we're on to the last step which is a lot easier and that's removing these three bolts that hold it on. Now they are a T30 star head fastener so once again it's a little bit of a specialty part but we're just going to crack them loose and back them out. Once again, you'll want to have your rag ready under there just for when you pull this thing off and fuel comes out of it. And with that, your fuel pump should be able to come right off. Make sure to pop that fitting off that the banjo bolt went through because that'll make it a lot easier to get this thing off. And then you could just gently coax it out. 
And here is our fuel pump. As you can see, we're leaking a lot of fuel, but that's to be expected. And then you could go ahead and pull out your cam follower if it didn't come out with the pump. With the follower out, you'll want to inspect it. So you want to look on the inside and see how the wear is and look on the face there and see how the wear is. And on mine, it's actually really not worn. I know for a fact that this one was replaced around 10,000 miles ago, but I still wanted to replace it just to be sure. And it does look pretty good. So if this thing is worn through or if there are deep gouges on it, you'll want to replace it. Like I said, that one looks pretty good. You also want to inspect your high pressure fuel pump. Mine definitely has some signs of wear on it because I know mine wore through before and the intake cam was replaced. And then the last thing that you want to take a look at is the intake cam itself. And as you can see here, mine is not worn. Uh, there are some tiny, tiny little scratches in it from where the follower rides, but there's nothing major. And that's basically what you want to look for. Then you could go ahead and install your new cam follower. Um, you want to make sure that it's lubed up, so you want oil on the face that rides against the cam. And basically just oil up the whole thing to make sure it slips around and uh, doesn't gall anything and gouge anything once you install your brand new part and start up your engine for the first time. And once that's good and oiled up, you could just slip it straight back into place. So once again, the camera shut off, but you wanna swap out the um, O-ring on this high pressure fuel pump. And to do that, you wanna gently, gently take a screwdriver and lift it up and make sure you don't nick any of the sealing surfaces on the pump itself. And then you could take the new O-ring, get a little bit of oil on it, and slip it on there. And that'll seal up nice and we're good to go. And now you could take your high pressure fuel pump and slide that right back into place here. And then you could get your new bolts and feed those in and get that whole thing tightened down. When you're putting in the new bolts, you want to make sure that you're evenly tightening them down so you don't strip anything. Once again, just carefully start everything and make sure everything's going in straight and then evenly tighten everything down and go in a circular pattern, tighten it a little bit, tighten it a little bit, tighten it a little bit until it's fairly snug. The torque spec is 7.5 foot-pounds, but since that's so little, I'm just going to carefully snug mine up and uh, say it's good to go. From here, reassembly is pretty straightforward. You're just going to do the opposite of everything that you've done so far. So get that banjo bolt in and start threading that in by hand. Then you'll get that fastener in place, that fitting in place I should say, and then slide your electrical connections back together and you should be good to go. The very last thing to do is to start up your car and make sure it starts and then also inspect your fuel pump and all the connections going to the fuel pump and make sure there are no fuel leaks. That's going to wrap up this video. Other than some of the specialty tools needed to replace the cam follower and some of the tricky positions of bolts, especially the banjo bolt, it's really not that bad of a job and it took me around two hours to do it for my first time while filming. So if you're experienced, you could probably do it in about half an hour. With all that said, thank you so much for watching. Please like this video if you liked it and subscribe for more. I hope you stick around for the next one. Take care.